Let's have a look at part B together. Second last question, show that, and you've got this messy looking integral on the left hand side, look at that terrible integrand, but apparently somehow if we do this right, it's all going to beautifully simplify down into log 2. So how can we get there? Well hopefully you recognized, even without any clues or hints, that this is a classic partial fractions decomposition. Um, it's true that this fraction on the left hand side looks horrendous, but because the denominator has been very nicely factorized to, for you in three linear factors, um, this is actually very straightforward to break into three partial fractions those partial fractions which each integrate into a log um, and it will actually be pretty straightforward to do even if it's a somewhat long question. So let's have a go, this is part B. And uh, what we want to find is uh, this 3x plus 7 all divided by, it's uh, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3. And what we want to do is we want to state that as three separate fa fractions. One, which is an x plus 1, uh, one which is an x plus 2, and another one which is an x plus 3. Now because this, these are all linear factors, um, I don't need to worry about introducing any, um, I don't have to worry about quadratic factors which will have linear denominators, so therefore I can just call them all constant. Uh, did I say denominators? I think I was meant to say numerators. Um, I don't have to worry about linear numerators, I just need constant numerators. So I'm going to call this capital A, capital B, capital C. All right, how do I do this? Well, um, there is one horrendous messy looking line which is the one that combines everything together. So if you take everything on the right hand side and you mash them all together, you're going to get A times x plus 2x plus 3. Then you're going to get B times x plus 1x plus 3. And then lastly, am I going to have space? I think so. C times x plus 1x plus 2. And all of that will be divided by... Soup. Um, the original denominator that we started with on the left hand side. Now at this point here you had a couple of choices um, and I'm going to make, make a case for the choice that I'm about to make. Um, the first option, which is the one I'm about to do, is I'm going to choose appropriate values of x that will make things cancel out. Um, if I just consider the numerators um, and, and not worry about the fact that I've got things on the denominators, I can let x equal particular values that make lots of things cancel um, and then I can just get a, get b, get c and then off I go. Another way of doing this is to just have a look at this whole, whoopsie daisy, look at this whole numerator and if you expanded this whole thing out, right, you're going to get some quadratics, you're going to get some x squareds, right? Those x squareds will have some a's and some b's and some c's attached. The x terms will have some a's and b's and c's attached and the same with the constant terms and you could then compare the x squareds and the x's and the constants on the right hand side with the ones on the left. Um, there's not going to be any x squared term so you could say that that's zero. Whatever x terms on the right hand side they should add up to three and whatever constant term on the right hand side that should add up to seven, right? You could do it that way too. The problem is, with that second method, is you're going to create a set of three simultaneous equations with three variables. It's not impossible to solve, it's just a mess. And as I was saying in the previous question, very error prone, so most people who tried to pull, to pull a trick like that um, ended up sort of getting themselves into an algebraic tangle. So I'm instead going to say, let's have a look at these numerators. So I'm going to say, let's consider these two objects, which should be equal to each other because the denominators are the same, should just be the numerators that really make the difference. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to choose values of x that work for me. Um, so for example, if you have a think, what's a value of x that will let me get a by itself, will eliminate the b and the c? And hopefully you're seeing, <laughs> seeing that if you notice the x plus 1 factor that's attached to the b and the c, if you put in x equals negative 1, then those are just going to become 0 and therefore B and C will just disappear completely and they'll just leave you with A. So I'm going to say, um, and I'm going to do this again for B and for C. So I'm going to go X equals negative 1. What does that give me on the left hand side? Uh, negative 3 plus 7. And then on the right hand side, it's going to give me A times what? And the answer is, um, it's going to be, uh, this is going to be a 1 and this is going to be a 2. So it's going to be 1 times 2. And so a is just going to be by itself as uh, 4 divided by 2. Uh, I guess I should say 2a equals 4. So a equals 2. I'm done. And I'm just going to pull this same trick over and over for b and for c. Uh, I'm going to do x equals negative 2. 
So what's that going to give me? On the left hand side, it's going to give me negative 6 plus 7. On the right hand side, it's going to give me B. Remember, all the A and C terms will disappear. So when you pop that in, it's going to give you negative 1 times 2. Um, no, sorry, take that back. That's a negative 1 times 1 because I'm substituting it into there. Um, and then you can see here, um, on the left hand side, uh, or I'll put that minus b, and then on the right hand side, negative 6 plus 7 is 1, so b just gives you negative 1. Once more with feeling, pop in x equals negative 3, uh, what am I going to get? So I'll get minus, minus 9 plus 7 is equal to c outside of, that looks like a negative 2 uh, times 1. Yeah, that looks like it's okay to me. Uh, nope, that's a negative one actually. See how easy it is to make these mistakes with negative signs, okay? Uh, and then let's see here. So you're gonna get 2c equals negative two. So c is also equal to negative one, just like b. Okay, so that was kind of like one half of the question. Uh, and this is a four mark question. So literally two marks were associated with this amount of work to get the partial fractions. As I mentioned before, you could totally do this. Um, you know, you'd get a line something like this. Uh, you're gonna have a outside of x squared plus five x plus six plus b outside of x squared plus four x plus three plus c outside of x squared plus three x plus two. So you would then say, well, have a look. Um, look at the x squared terms, right? There's gonna be a x squared here, b x squared here, and c x squared there. So a plus b plus c should equal zero because there are no x squared terms on the left. Then you would say five ax, 4bx, 3cx, those are all the x terms. So they should be paired up with the 3x. So 5a plus 4b plus 3c will give you three. And then you repeat that process for the constants. It totally works. It is just long and error prone. So I'm not gonna do it now. I'm gonna proceed to the integration. I found what a and b and c are. So therefore I can say, therefore, the integral from, what am I going from? From naught to one. Naught to one of, 3x plus 7, all divided by x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, with respect to x. I can now break that into those three integrals that I saw before, so, or rather those three fractions that I saw before, which will give me three integrals in a second. So 0 to 1, um, our a was 2, so that's 2 on x plus 1. Um, I'm going to have minus 1 on x plus 2, minus one on x plus three, and then all of that is with respect to x. When you're having a go at that, you can then see, um, this is not a hard thing to integrate, right? You're gonna have, here's my square bracket, two log of x plus one, minus a single log of x plus two, minus a single log of x plus three. And then I'm going from naught to one. And now I've just got to, I've done the integration, right? And now I've just got to substitute and simplify. And remember, don't skip any steps because the actual result that you're gonna end up with is already known. So I can't just do some awesome like canceling in my head and then say, oh, it must be this because the result was given to you. So you can't skip anything when it's that kind of situation. All right, let's do upper bound, take away lower bound. So it looks to me like I'm going to get uh, two log two. Uh, let's put another set of brackets here, shall we? 2 log 2 minus log of 3 minus log of 4. There's the upper bound. And then I'm going to subtract and we'll put in 0 for everything. So I'm going to get 2 log 1 minus log of 2 minus log of 3. There you go, there's my substitution. Now look carefully, right? You can see there's gonna be some things that cancel and some things that don't. Keep your eye on this log too because we know that's gonna be the final answer. Um, if you look closely, you can see um, there's a minus log three here and then there is a uh, double negative minus minus log three here. So that's going to become a plus log three. So those two are going to cancel. Uh, if you have a look at this log one term, log of one is zero. So that's gone. And because I know that this thing is going to stick around and it's already the right sign, you can see that double negative there. That means that these two have to be able to cancel. How does that work? And the answer is you need to remember your log laws. And again, don't skip any steps here, right? Two log two, I'm gonna write that as log of two squared, right? Because that's what we can do with the power law of that index, right? 
The log three and the log three can cancel, I'm fine with that. That leaves me with a minus log four. Um, then I'm going to subtract, and I'm not skipping anything here, the zero take away log two that was left there. And from here, I've got log four take away log four, double negative for the log, whoopsie daisy, I don't need that zero anymore, log two, and there is the log two as required. So let me make a final note before I leave off of this question. This was a show question, right? It wasn't find out what this integral is equal to. Um, we told you what it was equal to, it was equal to log two. Now what that means is if you made a mistake earlier on by decomposing your partial fractions incorrectly, if you went through this integration and um, did something wrong, or even actually did something right but with the wrong numbers because you, your partial fractions were incorrect, if you ended up at some line around like here or here as you were evaluating, you were substituting in the upper and lower bounds, and you were clearly not getting log two. That is a massive indicator to you that you should go back and fix up your error. Something went wrong, they told you what the answer was, we told you what the answer was, so that you could fix it, okay? Um, we are less forgiving when we give you the answer and you try and say, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna fudge it and say like, oh, that must be log two, right? No, that's not how it works, right? Us giving you that result is meant to be a hand for you, a hint to be able to say, if you make a mistake, because there's a lot of working here and lots of places for numerical errors to creep in, this is an easy escape hatch for you to work out. If something's gone wrong, I can fix it. So please be really careful and use the help that's been provided to you.